Just like if I won a car on a TV game show and then accidentally smashed it into an aquarium, sometimes good things can bring about negative consequences. This rings true in the world of cinema as well, with films that are praised for innovation or success giving birth to a string of copycats which ultimately harms the overall experience. It's a weird dynamic as the films on this list are legitimately great, but have unfortunately done more bad than good in the long run. With this in mind, I'm Jules for WhatCulture.com and these are 10 great movies that inadvertently ruin cinema. Number 10. The Godfather Part 2 brought about the use of numbers to denote sequels. Having a Part 2 tag on the end of a movie title might seem like something that has been around since the dawn of time, but it's a little known fact that Francis Ford Coppola's follow-up to The Godfather was the first movie in history to make blatant use of this subtitle. Before Coppola used Part 2 for The Godfather sequel, movie sequels tended to have different names. Once Coppola opted to do it this way, however, a new movie trend was born in that studios realized it was a neat way to market sequels. After all, it's a lot easier to cash in by telling people this is the same experience as the first one that they enjoyed, which a differently titled movie wouldn't be able to do so well. The difference was, though, that The Godfather was titled as such because it was an indication that you needed to see the first film in order to understand the second, which, as we know today, doesn't exactly mean the same thing now. Number 9. Jaws became the first blockbuster but inspired relentless marketing tactics. The success of Jaws is manyfold. It's a great film for a start, but one of the reasons that everyone saw it back in the day was because instead of being rolled out one territory at a time in the US as was the norm, it was released in theaters everywhere on the same day. This meant that the marketing budget and exposure people had to these adverts was excessive, and as a result, tons of people went to see it. This widespread campaigning of adverts was quickly adopted by other studios and is now the reason why every billboard, bus, and electronic service is smeared with film adverts. It was always going to be the way that cinema was heading, but Jaws did it first. Number 8. Heaven's Gate changed the way that movies were made forever and the death of independent auteur-driven films. Heaven's Gate has become something of a fable of cinematic disaster. After its budget rose to astronomical levels and the director became notoriously difficult to work with, the film flopped so hard that United Artists actually had to close down. Now, around this time, there was a boon of independent films financed by big studios, the idea being hundreds of small investments to offset the risk of a project failing. The issue was that this failure sparked panic within the big boys and then they pulled the funding. This led to tighter control of budgets, which are still huge now, but now have much more executive meddling than before. Number 7. Jurassic Park pretty much put an end to the usage of practical effects and animatronics. Stan Winston and Phil Tippett were the animatronic experts who worked on Jurassic Park, but neither of them had a truly positive experience on set. CGI was experimental at this point, but definitely on the rise, and in Jurassic Park it looked phenomenal. It was still expensive, but could move beyond the scope of animatronics. This led Tippett to utter the line, I've just become extinct. And when you look at the landscape of today's cinema, you can see that unfortunately, he was right. CGI is now standard practice with films, and in fact, they go overboard to sell any time that they actually have a real thing in real life on a real set. How bizarre. Number 6. Saving Private Ryan made Shaky Cam a staple of mainstream cinema. So the concept of shaky cam is in no way a technique invented by Spielberg, but it was one of the first blockbusters to incorporate this method into its shooting. Before this point, the wobbly viewpoint was seen as unprofessional, but Spielberg used it to great effect to disorientate his audience, especially during the Normandy beach assault. But as with all good examples, there have been countless times where this technique has either been misused or just done to hide shoddy action sequences. It's gotten so bad that in some fight or action scenes, it's near impossible to tell what's going on. What was so immersive in one film is just cutting corners in others. Number 5. Titanic brought the movie song back to popularity. My Heart Will Go On is one of the biggest selling singles of all time, and we have one of the biggest grossing films of all time to thank for it. For a long time prior to Titanic, the whole song from the movie had just died out, yet James Horner convinced James Cameron that a cash cow needed to be milked for all it was worth and that they should pop this track in thus breathing life back into the whole movie should have their own song phenomenon once more. And for a while, it was okay. It was cheesy as hell, but it was just okay. And now, it's just really annoying. Number 4. The Sixth Sense inspired endless left-field twist movies M. Night Shyamalan didn't invent the shocking twist with The Sixth Sense, of course, but he damn near pioneered it as a marketing technique and selling point for motion pictures in general. With The Sixth Sense, audiences were so impressed with the twist that they began clamoring for more, and Hollywood obliged. Which is to say, in the aftermath, Hollywood began to flood theaters with shocking left-field twist movies, motion pictures that would market themselves on being built around twists you'd never see coming. 
The problem with this is obvious, with the now expected twist becoming more and more over the top and declining dramatically in impact. Number 3. The original Star Wars trilogy implies that all sequels have to have weird names. Earlier in the video, we touched upon The Godfather Part 2's distinction of having been the first mainstream movie to include Part 2 in its title. Though the numbering system is irritating in an oh my god it reeks of corporate greed way, it's at least clean. But we have the original Star Wars trilogy to thank for an even worse trend, the ever weirdly named sequels. Since The Empire Strikes Back, the movie industry has literally been throwing lame and often very arbitrary subtitles onto anything and everything. Thor The Dark World, G.I. Joe Retaliation, Jack Ryan Shadow Recruit? What do they even mean? Well, Hollywood would say, well, we're being creative, guys. But what it really means to us is, what? Number 2. Avatar Made 3D Cool Again but is responsible for increased ticket prices. After several ailing attempts throughout cinematic history to make it relevant, Avatar was the first movie that finally made 3D cool in the eyes of the movie going public. James Cameron set out to have the audience feeling like they were right inside the world of stupidly named precious resources. Even now, the achievement stands tall. Gravity aside, Avatar is still probably the best and most accomplished 3D film ever. However, the films that followed in its wake were not as well incorporated, and even lower-ranked flicks offered 3D as a way to cash in. As a result, prices rose to accommodate this new viewing experience, and viewers were subject to films shot in 2D but awkwardly bumped to 3D in post-production, and let's just say, it showed. And number one, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1 and 2 showed that you can just chop an ending in half. If somebody told you that your film would make millions of dollars, you'd be pretty happy. Now, imagine if that same person told you that you could take your film, split it in two, pad out some bits to fill in the runtime, and make double. Well, if you have standards, then you'd probably be okay not doing this, but Harry Potter proved that splitting your final arc in two really could bring in the muggle money. The split arguably was never needed from a storytelling perspective and encouraged countless other titles to follow suit. The problem with this, of course, is that moviegoers are now having to fork out twice as much to see two parts of a story that only needed one part. Twilight and The Hunger Games are guilty of this as well, and while it's so obvious what they're doing, they still get millions of people to go in and see it. And that's just annoying. Where am I? Where am I? WHERE AM I?! How would you guys like to start a Star Trek channel? Have we any idea what came through the rupture before we were able to shut it down? We seek new life and new civilizations, but mess with us. Real life dolphins that you have seen in a nature documentary and I have dated at least two women with tattoos on. Why are we all for a reason? It's not just because it's fun. Whee! Right, hold on. I'm the wise cracking first officer who kisses hot alien babes first, asks questions later. Chris is the chief engineer because he makes things work and look nice. Marcus is the captain, obviously, as he's the only one who's verified on Twitter. Brian Blossom! Brian Blossom! I am, in fact, the still very much under probation, Sean Ferry. As he was deemed to be satanic. <laughs> Episode 14, Beverly Fuck a Ghost. 100 King Food Kitchen. Yes, sir. Get in. Good. Oh, yeah. Which is great. But then her and Sulu end up dead. Because that's who you go get sex advice from on the Enterprise? This one may lean a little heavy on the conspiracy theory side of things, but they just haven't showed it to us yet. Terry Farrell grabbed my hand and said how proud that made her, and that is a memory I really just wanted to share with everybody today. Take a walk with me as we go and do some cetacean observations. Hi, Dad. With that in mind then, I'm Ellie with Trek Culture, and here are 10 examples of Star Trek story arcs you can binge in a day. The show is, to quote a famous Trek Culture voice, piss funny. So, so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, what? Guys, guys, we are, we are, we're cutting live, live to Adam Cleary right now. Well, 